Hello everyone, this is Bryant with SFOT Source, your premier guide to Six Flags over Texas, and it is time for another installation of our Decade in Review series. This time, we'll take a look at Six Flags over Texas between 1990 and 1999. The presence of Time Warner and Premier Parks leave a substantial stamp on the park during this time span. The 1990s are also a time of extreme growth with the addition of several record-breaking and large attractions. This decade would steer Six Flags as a chain down a path of overexpansion and inevitable financial troubles. Let's jump right into 1990, a huge year for Six Flags over Texas. The 1990 season begins on March 17th and features the addition of a record-breaking attraction. The Texas Giant, a wooden coaster designed by Curtis D. Summers, is added to the park at a cost of $5.5 million. The coaster's structure includes 900,000 feet of lumber, 1,200 concrete piers, 10 tons of nails, and 81,270 bolts. Standing 143 feet tall and reaching speeds of 62 miles per hour, Texas Giant is the tallest and fastest wooden roller coaster in the world when introduced. That same year, Bubba's Hot Dogs is also introduced in the park's Texas section to go along with the Texas Giant theme. Summer entertainment in the park includes the Dolphin Show in the Aquatic Theater and the Bugs Bunny Celebration on Ice in Looney Tunes Theater, which is now commonly known as Majestic Theater. The Texas Heritage Crafts Festival debuts in the fall and features numerous skilled crafts such as soap making and wood carving. Specialty food and musical performances also highlight the event. 2.9 million guests are recorded for 1990, making it a record season for the park. Fright Fest and Holiday in the Park round out the season. One primary attraction of Holiday in the Park is the Christmas Fantasy on Ice in Music Mill Amphitheater. In 1991, Time Warner purchases one half of Six Flags Corporation, while the Blackstone Group and Wertheim Schroeder purchase the other. The 1991 season begins on March 9th. Looney Tunes Land, the park's children's area, sees a number of upgrades. Martian Escape, a swing ride, is introduced. Other additions include Sylvester's Junior's Train, the Convoy, and Porky Pig Magic Wheel. Jumping fountains are also added, and the Cooper Kettle Dining Location, located in that children's area, becomes Waskell's Burgers and Fries. The Aquatic Theater and Tower has its pool covered and becomes home to the Hollywood Stunt Show. Other summer entertainment includes Pizzazz in Southern Palace Theater, the Bugs Bunny Celebration on Ice in Looney Tunes Theater, and a magic show in Lone Star Theater. The Texas Heritage Crafts Festival, Fright Fest, and Holiday in the Park return in the fall and winter months. At the end of 1991, the Spelunkers Cave Dark Ride Attraction, the Ski Ball Palace, and the Aquatic Theater are removed from Six Flags over Texas. Coca-Cola presents Batman Nights at Six Flags. Come see the all-new Batman stunt show with enormous explosions, death-defying falls, and all those wonderful toys. There's even the Batmobile. The greatest Hollywood stunts are right here at Six Flags. Bring a can from any Coca-Cola product. We get $7 off after 4 p.m. every day, or two-for-one admission after 4 p.m. on Fridays. Batman Nights, this summer only at Six Flags in Coca-Cola, Texas. Home of the real thing. 
The 1992 season begins on February 29th, the earliest start to a season in the park's history. Yosemite Sam and the Gold River Adventure debuts in the location once occupied by the Spelunkers Cave attraction. Also a dark ride, this concept features Looney Tunes characters and the search for Yosemite Sam and the Stolen Gold. In the tower section, the 2,500-seat Texas Arena is constructed on the former site of the Aquatic Theater. The Texas Arena also becomes home to the Batman Stunt Show. In the park's USA section, the building that was once home to the Exhibition Hall is transformed into Looney Tunes Mall. Summer entertainment includes We Are the World, Do You Hear the People Sing in Southern Palace Theater, Bugs Bunny Goin' Hollywood in Looney Tunes Theater, One More Payment and It's Mine in Crazy Horse Saloon, and a magic show featured in Lone Star Theater. The fall and winter months once again feature the Texas Heritage Crafts Festival, Fright Fest, and Holiday in the Park. A trip to Six Flags or Disneyland, a dog's view. We all know Disneyland's a great place to visit, but if you don't have time for the trip this year, consider the alternative, Six Flags, bigger, faster, closer. No matter where you live, there's one nearby. Plus, you get home in time to feed your dog. Six Flags theme parks. Look for great savings at a McDonald's near you. The Six Flags Over Texas 1993 season begins on March 6th. General admission for adults is $25.95 and children are admitted for $19.95. Time Warner purchases the other half of Six Flags Inc. and takes over full ownership. The front gate of the park is given a full facelift. Summer Entertainment features Ice Express, an ice skating show in Southern Palace Theater, now That Country in Crazy Horse Saloon, and The Batman Stunt Show in Texas Arena. Returning events for 1993 included Spring Breakout, the Texas Heritage Crafts Festival, Fright Fest, and Holiday in the Park. Six Flags is the number two theme park company in the United States, and that means we got to work really hard. We're in the fantasy business. I mean, you look around us, and uh, you know you're in another world. It's got to be cleaner than reality, friendlier than reality. There should be something for everybody. You know, when, when you're number two, you have to have a few things number one doesn't have. And what we've got is some very exciting rides. If you're not a chicken, no matter where you live, there's a Six Flags near you. Come on in. Get your tickets at the gate or in advance by calling 214-706-0606. Six Flags Over Texas starts their 1994 season on March 5th. Though no new attractions are added, Roaring Rapids is renamed LaSalle's River Rapids, with the entrance being moved from Tower to France. Judge Roy Scream's trains are also flipped and run backwards. The change was only supposed to last through the spring, but it ends up lasting the whole season. Stand-up baskets are removed from Texas Shootout. The park's summer entertainment lineup is heavily influenced by Warner Brothers. Southern Palace Theater features the Warner Music Rock Review. Miss Lily's Red Garter plays in Crazy Horse Saloon. The Batman Stunt Show returns to Texas Arena. Pure Country is featured in Lone Star Theater. And the Hollywood Animal Stunt Show is featured in the newly named Animal Action Theater. The OK Corral Shootout Backlot Show is featured in the streets of the park's Texas section. The Texas Heritage Crafts Festival returns in the fall. Fright Fest takes place October 7th to 28th and features Welcome to Arania's Nightmare as the main entertainment offering. Other attractions include Arania's Tombs of Doom in France and the Terrorplex in Spain. Holiday in the Park finishes out the 1994 season. The park's 1995 season begins on April 28th. The year's main attraction is the addition of Adventure Theater. Featuring 3D screen effects and moving seats, this virtual reality attraction was home to the Right Stuff Mach 1 Adventure. 
To help push the theme of this new attraction, Texas Cliffhanger is renamed G-Force Anti-Gravitational Test Facility, and Splash Water Falls is renamed to Splashdown Re-Entry Test Simulation. The Music Mill Amphitheater in the park's tower section is also expanded from 10,000 seats to 15,000 seats. Summer entertainment for 1995 included Hot Rockin' Country in Southern Palace Theater, Miss Lily's Red Garter Review in Crazy Horse Saloon, the Hollywood Animal Stunt Show in Animal Action Theater, and the return of the Batman Stunt Show. The park's primary events, which include Texas Heritage Crafts Festival, Fright Fest, and Holiday in the Park, return to finish out the season. At the end of 1995, Spinnaker, the park's Schwarzkopf Enterprise attraction, is removed and relocated to Fiesta, Texas in San Antonio. Disney's a great place to be, but if you can't make the long trip this year, drop in on some big thrills right now at Six Flags. It's bigger than Disneyland, with a special magic all its own, where everyone will find extraordinary fun and superstars around every corner. And wherever you are this summer, there's a Six Flags theme park close by. Drop into Six Flags, so big, so fast, so close. The 1996 season at Six Flags Over Texas began a consistent string of large expansion and the addition of high thrill attractions throughout the park. Beginning on March 2nd, adult admission was set at $29.95 and children under 48 inches were admitted at $23.95. Steve Calloway takes over the reins as general manager of Six Flags Over Texas after Bob Bennett retires. The main attraction of the season is Runaway Mountain. Staged inside a faux mountain in complete darkness, Runaway Mountain is a high thrill steel roller coaster that features twists, turns, and moments of airtime. Runaway Mountain takes over the area once occupied by Spinnaker. Also in Old South, Granny's Kitchen, which had previously been known as Naylor's Chicken Plantation, becomes Gator McGee's Mountain Grill. The restaurant ties directly into Runaway Mountain theming as Gator McGee's voice can also be heard giving safety spiels at the new coaster. With the addition of Runaway Mountain, Runaway Mine Train is simply renamed Mine Train to avoid confusion. The second major attraction for 1996 was the addition of Dive Bomber Alley in the park's tower section. Standing 150 feet tall, this sky coaster sends riders flying through the skies at the pool of a ripcord. A dining location in Mexico, simply known as the Mexican Restaurant via past park maps, is renamed Casa de las Banderas. This location was also home to El Chico when the park first opened in 1961. Summer entertainment included Hot Rockin' Country in Southern Palace Theater, The Wild West Review in Crazy Horse Saloon, The Hollywood Animal Stunt Show in Animal Action Theater, Bugs Bunny Wacky World Games in Lone Star Theater, and the return of the Batman Stunt Show. It's summer, and I got a lot of things planned. I gotta go to Emma's, I gotta do a few chores, and I've gotta help with my baby sister. But it's all worth it, because this is it's There's nothing like it anywhere! There's Batman, really cool coasters, and Bugs and his buddies. Hey, summer isn't summer, unless you go to Six Flags. Cool! So big, so fast, so close. So go! The 1997 season begins on March 1st with high hopes of opening a new and exciting roller coaster, Mr. Freeze. Due to technical difficulties, however, the opening of Mr. Freeze is delayed. With the addition of Mr. Freeze, the Good Times Square train station is removed, a new station named Boomtown Depot is constructed. Boomtown Depot sits at the same spot of the train loop, just on the opposite side. Summer entertainment at Six Flags Over Texas includes Hot Rockin' Country in Southern Palace Theater, Wild West Review in Crazy Horse Saloon, The Hollywood Animal Stunt Show in Animal Action Theater, Warner Brothers Behind the Scenes in Lone Star Theater, and The Batman Stunt Show. 
Fall and winter months are packed with returning events including the Texas Heritage Crafts Festival, Fright Fest, and Holiday in the Park. At the end of the season, the Elmer Fudd Ferris Wheel attraction is removed from the children's area. The end of 1997 also marks the first cease and normal operation for Casa Magnetica. 1998 brings in new ownership for the park and Six Flags as a whole, with Premier Parks taking over. The season officially begins on February 28th, and one month later, Mr. Freeze finally opens to the public. Standing 235 feet tall and reaching speeds of 70 miles per hour, Mr. Freeze debuts as the park's tallest and fastest roller coaster. Mini Mine Train, which had been closed and reprofiled with the addition of Mr. Freeze, also reopens in the park's Boomtown section. LaSalle's River Rapids, which had been rethemed just a handful of seasons prior, is renamed Roaring Rapids. The entrance is also moved back to the tower section. Summer entertainment features the same shows as the 1997 season and the typical fall and winter events and festivals return for guests. At the end of the season, the Right Stuff Mach 1 Adventure is removed from the Adventure Theater. Discover Six Flags Over Texas as a whole new season of magic takes to the sky. The 1999 season, our final year in this review, begins on March 6th with Spring Breakout. Admission for adults is $34.99 and children under 48 inches are $17.50. Yet another large addition is added to Six Flags Over Texas in the way of a new park area and roller coaster. The game's midway of Good Times Square is removed with this new expansion. The park also sees a new game's midway area in Gotham City along with additional games of skill added in Boomtown. Batman the Ride, the park's first and only inverted roller coaster, is added to the new Gotham City area and opens on May 26th. Batman the Ride features five inversions, speeds of up to 50 miles per hour, and a height of 105 feet. Six Flags Over Texas saw the addition of two other attractions in 1999, including Escape from Dino Island 3D and Adventure Theater, and the Six Flags Speedway, a go-karts track located in the park's tower section next to Shockwave. A new slate of summer entertainment is unveiled with Hooray for Hollywood and Southern Palace Theater, the Crazy Horse Saloon Review, Lone Star Legacy and Lone Star Theater, the Carnival of Chaos Stunt Show, and the Texas Backlot Stunt Show. The Animal Action Theater is renamed back to Good Times Square Theater and features Illusion Area, a new magic show. The park closes out the 1999 season with events such as the Texas Heritage Crafts Festival, Fright Fest, and Holiday in the Park. At the end of 1999, the Great Six Flags Air Racer attraction is removed from the park's tower section. The 1990s were certainly a time of huge growth for Six Flags over Texas. Many more licensed characters, attractions, and a new park area were introduced as Time Warner and Premier left their mark. What was your favorite part of the 1990s at Six Flags over Texas? Personally, my favorite addition to the park is Mr. Freeze. The high thrill attraction still features a unique experience to this day. 
Perhaps the most underwhelming part of the decade was the addition of the Gotham City Park area, especially looking at what it has turned into today. Make sure to check out our other Decade in Review videos and stay tuned as we continue to travel back in time at the original Six Flags theme park. Stay safe, take care of each other, and we hope to see you soon at a theme park.